We need to talk about flesh today. Flesh. Hopefully you're all awake now. Because <laughs> we're, we're delving into St. Paul's masterpiece, his letter to the Romans. And Paul's letter to the Romans actually might be kind of a scary letter to read because it's pretty black and white. Flesh is bad, spirit is good. Paul says that anyone that does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. He also says in this reading that we Christians do not live by the flesh, for by the flesh we die. It's, it's pretty stark reading. Well, there are some theologians that say that we should be taking Paul very seriously and pretty much literally. They say that prayer is good, church is good, everything else is bad. Everything else is flesh, everything else is of the world, and we are to toss it aside. So if you're not on your knees praying, you're wasting your time and in danger of hellfire, the ultimate end for those who live by the flesh. It's not really what St. Paul is talking about. St. Paul is describing two ways, two orientations for living your life. To live by the flesh is to be determined by your flesh, to be a slave to your urges and desires. It's to be powerless in the face of temptation, uh, fear, danger, shame, or, or just difficulty in general. It's to not have control over yourself. And we all want to be in control of ourselves. One simple way you could say it is to live by the flesh is to always take the easy way. Now, to live by the Spirit is pretty much the exact opposite. It's to look toward the future. It's to look with an eye for hope. It's to look for righteousness and to not necessarily take the easy way. And that takes integrity and inner strength. Christ understood this. Christ understood that the way of righteousness, what is good and what is, what is right and what is pleasing to God is not always the easy way. And yet, in the Gospel, he says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, for those of you that have not grown up on a farm, a yoke is what you put around the ox or the beast of burden to plow the fields. And priests have their own yoke to wear, our, our stole, which goes around our neck. So we're putting on the labor of Christ when we wear our stoles like this. And even as the cross was looming in Christ's immediate future, he still said, my yoke is easy, my burden light. And that's strange. But he's saying that the more challenging the immediate difficulty is, the easier the spiritual challenge can become. There's a paradox here that things can be astoundingly difficult and effortless and easy at the exact same time. To give you an idea of how that might make sense, I'd like to tell you a story. The story of how I became a vegetarian. And I'm not trying to convert any of you, but if you just can't bear to eat meat after today, God will understand, I'm sure. So I started caring about this in college, my first two years in college, and it made sense up here. I had read some books, and my friends were, were getting into this, and it was a philosophic idea of being nice to the animals. God wasn't really calling me to it, and I wasn't feeling it in my heart. This was also the time in my life where I was starting to take my faith more seriously, and so I was choosing to abstain from meat on Fridays, as we're all supposed to be doing. <laughs> it was torture. It was absolute torture. Fridays were miserable. I, I, 
couldn't imagine doing that to myself every day of my life. It, it seemed unthinkable to, to not eat meat. I couldn't even manage one day of the week. And that's where I was for a while until I went to Princeton, New Jersey for an internship over the summer. And apparently the physics department had a, uh, a yearly fishing trip they went, to, uh, they went on every June or July. And uh, so I went. Uh, not really what I wanted to do, but I had to be a team player. So there I was, somewhere in the Atlantic Ocean, utterly miserable, surrounded by about 30 strange men, because none of my coworkers actually went. So I was completely alone. And I'm so bad at fishing. The, the captain actually bellowed for everyone to hear, what, are you from the Midwest? <laughs> I think he expected me to literally throw my fishing pole into the ocean, that's how bad I was. So I decided I was never gonna do this again. And then it happened. I looked over and one of the other guys caught a big old blue, a big fish. And he ripped the hook right out of its mouth and then took out a, a pen knife and stabbed the fish a bunch of times to mark it as his and said, okay, that one's mine, and then threw it in this bin where all the other caught fish were. And the whole time I could see the fish flopping in agony over this, and my jaw had just dropped. And I knew at that moment that I just couldn't do this anymore. I couldn't eat meat for fear of my heart breaking. And I had plenty of time to change my mind, because we had the entire way back, and uh, a storm hit us, so we were delayed, uh, it was cold and rainy and rocky and I was completely seasick the entire time and I was never so happy to see land again. <laughs> but something happened that day on the boat. The next day I found that not eating meat was astoundingly easy. I cannot describe to you the change. I wasn't even suffering. I was happy to turn aside from the food that I was practically addicted to a week or two ago. It was, it was incredible. I was happy to do so. And looking back, what happened is, miserable and seasick on that boat, I found a cause. I found something that I could really believe in, that I could happily suffer for. A job from which I needed no vacation and no break. It's my burden. It's the yoke I have placed on myself. And amen, amen, I say to you, my yoke is easy and my burden light. And my fleshy desires will just have to deal with that, no matter how delicious that triple cheeseburger smells. <laughs> and yes, it still smells fantastic. <laughs> um, in all likelihood, not all of you have a cause like that. And that's fine. Uh, you can also have more than one. Uh, the possibilities abound. All right, this church has excellent pro-life efforts, and you can't do much better than that if you're looking for a cause. Uh, I think that one of my dad's big causes was caring for the, uh, the well-being of his employees. And if you want to take up your cross and follow Christ, it can be something as specific as feeding the homeless it can be as general as fostering respect among all peoples. The possibilities abound. And if any of this is ringing true for some of you, if you have something like this in your heart, today is a fine day to renew your passion for that thing that you believe in. And for those of you that don't yet have a cause, I hope you do find one one day. Because having a personal quest and believing in its righteousness, that is to live by the Spirit. And it makes you better because you have a cause that you're willing to not take the easy way for. It's exercise for your willpower. And stronger willpower means you will be better able to combat stress and anxiety Stronger willpower means it is harder for other people to manipulate you. Stronger willpower gives you a better ability 
to hear the voice of God and then follow it to where it's leading you. No matter how dangerous or unknown that place may be, you will have the strength to not take the easy way. And that's where your faith belongs anyway. Out in the world, expressed in your life to be a beacon and support for all whom you meet.